All right, Diablo players, let's talk about it. how to stop being bad at the game. And there's a lot of things that I want to cover in this video. So these are going to be kind of rapid fire really fast. The first thing I want to talk about is attack power means nothing in this game. I get asked all the time, how is your attack power so high? Or, you know, how do I get my attack power up? This is not Diablo Immortal or some other game where that number determines how powerful your character is. It means absolutely nothing in terms of the end game. It's designed as an earlier metric for people to kind of get the hang of understanding like this number go up equal better but it's not really good in terms of the end game and there's always people consistently it's mainly on tiktok where they they don't understand like build guides and stuff and they're just like you know your attack power is way higher than mine your build must be like a thousand times better legitimately you can have less than half of my attack power and still do more damage than me it really comes down to how your build is actually set up because there's a lot of things that can activate, like for example, an Andariel's build will not be able to show off how much attack power that thing is doing versus some other build that's getting a lot more attack speed and gets a lot more dexterity, that will actually factor in. So the main point I wanna get across right here is never look at the stat sheet. It is basically a giant lie in terms of how powerful your character is. One thing that you can use it for though is specifically looking at the armor and life can make somewhat of a difference, but if you have a bunch of life but have no damage reduction, that doesn't matter. This is another thing where people are like, you have less HP than me, but I still die faster. So damage reduction is a huge thing that you need to factor in in terms of your character's survivability. It doesn't matter if you have 10 times the amount of life. If you take, you know, 20 to 30 times the amount of damage, well, then the amount of HP kind of is a lot worth less than, let's say, getting some sort of damage reduction. So factor that in as well when you're looking at builds. And then I get asked all the time in terms of like, the, it's, it's mainly doing with the attack power. So I will never cheat in Diablo 4 and there's multiple reasons why and I kind of want to like go over that uh, in a second here and another thing that uh, someone mentioned on one of the comments because I do read your guys' comments. Now there's some YouTubers out there say I read every single one of your comments. They never do. Okay, let's be honest, but I do check them out from time to time and uh, this person over here says the planner doesn't match or build ice blades where how be better. So I explained it. Someone actually, you know, mentioned this a couple times on uh, across a lot of builds. So this is a very frequently like thing that people will post when I make a build. I will have specifically Harlequin Crest slotted in, which will actually give us plus ranks to skills. So on a lot of builds, you may see people have plus ranks of something. And then in the skill tree, they don't have any points into it, but they still have the skill equipped. Now, how they are doing that is because they have the plus ranks to whatever sort of skill it is. So factor that in also, I always try to put some notes and like a lot of times I'll write like, if you don't have Harlequin, you will need to address the skill tree. Or if you don't have this item, this item can work too. I always try to put as much notes as possible because people ask, is this item okay if I, if I don't have this item? And a lot of the times, sure, you can slot in anything, but to get the same results, you need to essentially run the same build. Builds. Um, I've been playing Diablo for like a really long time. So if I make a suggestion to someone and sometimes people will like argue, is this better or is this better? It comes down to sometimes the player's preference. This was from a previous season of Diablo when speedrun actually had like speedruns for the uh, website. I've taken multiple first place. I actually had so many more, but uh, as time goes on, you know, obviously people beat speedruns, but I used to really go into speedrunning in this game. I was actually featured inside of Diablo and I would never cheat in Diablo because I work with Blizzard, and as a partner, obviously, if you're cheating in the game or doing RMT, which is like real money trading, you're gonna more than likely lose your partnership. So I, I won't cheat in Diablo for those reasons. I've been in the game multiple times, hitting rank one. This is on Diablo three. In Diablo four, like I said, the only time we really had a good leaderboard was back in a previous season where this actually mattered. Like people were actually competing, but nowadays it's kind of like a desolate area because there is technically the uh, pit ladder, but it's not even official in the game. So a lot of people don't like really use it. But I also want to bring this up as it's a huge part of like going over builds because even though like I may upload a build and I remember this happened when I was doing speed runs and I was getting rank one pushers, people were like, well, your build that you uploaded saying best sorceress build, it's different from the one that you're playing right now. Why is that? The rank one builds are going to be a lot different than what most people will actually suggest. Even if you look at lots of different websites, it could be max roll, it could be mobilitics, D4 builds, icy veins. A lot of times when you're looking at the leaderboards, people do these weird things to try to squeeze as much DPS as possible. And most players, 
Not only maybe can't actually run those things because it requires like a triple master or greater affix on like the best roll on certain things, but it's more so that you're not really supposed to try to push as high as you can in the pit for like an optimal build. You actually don't really need to push on specifically the uh, Infernal Hordes tier 8 in season uh, five right now. Don't actually do that. And I'll, I'll actually explain why. And it actually comes down to, if you've ever played Diablo 3, there was a thing where we had these like greater rifts, right? And you could go up to 150. And I, I have a gameplay of me using no weapon and clearing a greater rift 150. Now, the thing is, is that you don't want to sit there to play 150s again and again. This is a terrible investment of your time and it's not going to make your character any more powerful with the exception of, I guess, you get the gem upgrades, but most people don't max out their gems in D3. Just like in Diablo 4, no one's going for perfect master working on every single piece of gear that they have. There comes a point where, like, the amount of upgrades that you get versus the time that is required for the input is very, very long for a very small amount. Now, obviously, getting your stuff master work to get 12 out of 12, that's great, but requiring people to get triple, you know, greater affixes to get the same experience is not something that most people will actually do. So that's why I'm always saying that if I drop, like, a build for best guide, it's going to be the best for, like, the 99% of the player base. It might not be the highest push build, but you really shouldn't be focused in on pushing the highest. Uh, you should be focusing in on what's actually efficient. And I'll use this as an example. Because I, I, I've been checking out a lot of people's videos and even on other content creators, because I do follow pretty much most of the Diablo like uh, partner group and uh, a lot of other content creators, I like watching Diablo videos and I'll kind of see what other people are cooking up. And a lot of the times I'll see this in other people's comments. Oh, this build doesn't do tier eight. I tried this build and it doesn't do tier, you know, eight. The main goal that you need to do is tier seven. Anything past tier seven at the moment doesn't really matter too much. You get five extra Neath Iron, which is very, very minimal in terms of the amount of Aether that is required. I have two numbers over here. So you can see there's one that's completed that it's a tier eight and one that's a tier seven. Now I'll also mention, yes, I understand it's RNG and what you get, but on average, most people will get way more Aether by doing one tier lower. You can see there's a completed wave over there, 10 out of 10, and that Granted, 436 versus a tier 7 that did 9 out of the uh, 9 waves, which again will take less time, and you're getting. In this case, it was doubled. Like, again, it's not going to be 100% accurate every single time. It's not like, oh, if I do tier 7, I'm getting 800 every single time. Or if I'm doing a tier 8, I'm going to only get 400. It depends on how good your build is. But most people will not get a build that's going to one-shot every single thing on tier 8. That's why I'm telling you guys, just like in the pit where most people are doing specifically the number 101, it's just the most efficient way to actually play the game. So stop being bad and thinking, oh, if the build cannot clear tier 8, it is a bad build. Tier 7 is what I would consider the breakpoint for a build to be at least viable in at least like 15 minutes. Because in theory, you could take the most garbage build in the game, you could actually run a basic attack, and you could do tier 8. It's just that you're not going to get the required resources that are going to be worth the time. Again, the difference between a 7 and 8 is quite big in the jump, but you don't get a crazy amount of extra bonus rewards for doing it. That's why time and time again, I'm telling you guys uh, across all like builds, just make sure that you can do tier 7. Going to tier 8 is really difficult and you don't even get more rewards for it. It's not like, oh, I open up the chest at the end and I get a mythic unique every single time, which we'll also talk about over here. This person talked about pit map reward should be higher. I absolutely agree with this, but at the same time, don't focus in on what build can push the highest in the pit. Just like when I was speedrunning, don't focus in on copying my build that I'm doing for like a very niche thing. Again, pit builds and the Infernal Hordes builds are going to be kind of different, and you should not be essentially doing the pit unless you're like, I want to be a top 1%er of a 1%er. I just want the highest pit clear to, you know, sh pin it on my refrigerator and show my mom. Basically, you don't get anything for doing like a high level pit. Uh, I mean, you get the materials, but like you're not getting anything that would be actually worth doing the highest level of the pit. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Another thing I wanted to bring up, and this goes across like all builds, because I I am friends with a lot of other content creators, and this is a thing that I've constantly seen, and the reason why this is like this really weird image of like the pizza over here, is that someone was like, I copied your build almost exactly. This is actually from like a previous season, but this was a very frequently asked thing, and this is also a thing in specifically season five for the lightning sorceress, where people are like, my cooldown isn't matching up. I don't understand why. It's because your stuff is not like triple masterwork greater affix. If you don't happen to have the same piece of gear, you're not going to get the same results. And the example that I use in this is something I really like, so I want to go ahead and use it again. 
The difference between using ketchup and tomato sauce if you are making a pizza is majorly different. Even though ketchup, okay, it's from tomatoes, it's not going to give you the same results. So if you happen to have an item like Tyrael's Might that gives you a bunch of damage reduction and all these resistances, and then you're like, well, I got uh, another item that gives me, you know, half the damage reduction, I replaced it with Tyrael's, it's not giving me the same results. You have to get the exact same thing. So essentially, it's okay if you need to slot something in for now, but don't expect the same results if you don't run the same pieces of gear. And this goes across like, you know, mythic uniques. It's specifically this, I see it in the comments a lot. But another thing I want to mention is specifically on like another uh, build that we just dropped, which was like a whirlwind barb, and I was telling people to tap the whirlwind, and there's a post over here saying that it does more DPS by doing this, and some people were arguing and saying that, like, why wouldn't you just hold it down, and you're making it harder for yourself, but you actually get more DPS. There are certain things in the game that are kind of weird, like there is something called, like, force move, and you can actually increase your attack speed with the rogue on certain skills if you force the game to move and break the animation. So there are these cool, really weird tricks that can increase your DPS, but not everyone is going to be able to play them, and they're going to be thinking like, oh, is my build bad? Am I doing something wrong? And it doesn't come down to essentially the build copied uh, in terms of like like being wrongfully copied. It's more so that you're not using the mechanic like spamming on the button versus again, holding it down. That, it's specifically with Whirlwind, uh, but there's there's someone else that commented this is like, attack speed doesn't scale on tornadoes, which is partially true. And then he was like, your build failed. And essentially someone else mentioned it over here, like the more fury that you're spending is gonna get you more dust devils and how it works is, uh, if you are able to spend more fury or if you if you reach some sort of bonus when you spend fury you would then gain that but on top of that how it does work is it's every every set amount of resource that you generate will then spawn more tornadoes so the more times that we're attacking is activating on Darius, which is giving us more life per hit and more life per hit activates starlight uh aspect and that's going to give us extra resources so there's like certain builds have a crazy amount of depth Nine times out of ten, the, the content creator will make the build correctly, but in the off chance that they do, sometimes, I, I actually don't mind when people, like, try to, uh, you know, backseat game, because some, sometimes there are legitimately times where there are some newer discoveries, there's things that are double dipping, working, not as intended, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, but like, there's this other thing over here where some people are arguing about this uh, in terms of getting attack speed on Whirlwind. This is literally from the official Blizzard website here. They're saying they fixed an issue where Whirlwind didn't scale up with passive and temporary attack speed, so you can see that it does work with Whirlwind now. In the original state of the game, in season like uh, like the earlier seasons, there were other things that you could do with Whirlwind, but not to get too complex, certain skills do get updated, and sometimes what happens is an older build may not function correctly because they have updated it, and like I've uploaded videos in the past where I said, Whirlwind uh, getting extra attack speed does not matter unless you are using it to break animations, which is another thing, so now it kind of works more properly, but keep in mind, this is a games as a service, they're updating the game, so certain things may change with the build, and the best thing to do is watch the most recent updated one, which we'll get into it a second here. Um, another thing I wanted to briefly talk about is like, oh, it's easy. You only need two Ubers. Now, I don't know if the person was like memeing when I was said like, all you need is two Uber uniques for this build. It's not that hard to build. And it comes down to actually being able to obviously farm the mythic uniques or the Uber uniques. And it really isn't that hard. And it's not going to be like a five minute thing. Sometimes people expect, oh, you need to go to Uber unique. Oh, how can I go get one? And they expect to just walk in the door and just to drop out of a chest. It's not going to be that simple. You're going to have to invest in the time. This is not a mobile game where you can auto play and then you're going to get the best thing by slamming in mom's credit card. You actually need to invest the time in order to get the best item. Like if I drop a build that says like, this is the best whatever. And what what I find strange with this is that people sometimes expect to get the best gear instantly. And if you've ever played Diablo 2, Diablo 2 takes so long to get the best gear. Diablo 3 to 4, it's actually quite easy. Now, obviously getting, you know, multiple like greater affixes, this is actually crazy. And this is where I understand that this becomes unachievable by, by most people to get like a, a very specific thing to get triple master working. It can be achieved by most people, but again, a greater affix on any of the mythic uniques, it is definitely hard. And I don't blame you guys for saying that like it's impossible to build these certain builds. But if you don't reach the threshold and you're seeing gameplay of a content creator, Creator. And I saw this very frequently on a lot of Sorks uh, from the Sork community when they're able to use this and people were commenting saying, hey, your build sucks. It's a lie. It's Photoshop. And like, it just comes down to you have to copy it exactly. And that's why uh, more recently when I dropped my Sorceress build guide, uh, where I'm saying that this is one of the best Sork builds for season five, 
it is the best for like 90% of the player base. There's very few people that will actually get a Harlequin with a greater affix cooldown reduction triple masterwork. It's just unrealistic. So for most people, just playing the Frozen Orb one is going to be good enough for the time being. But again, if you are like the top one percenters, sure, you can go for it and then you can hold down Lightning Spirit and it will actually function correctly. But this is just super, super hard to get. You need to get lots of cooldown reduction in order for certain builds to function. This is also something that I've noticed in the Druid community as well. But as far as getting those uber uniques, there is no secret, there is no streamer luck, it just comes down to playing the game again and again. And I'll probably make an updated guide in the future in terms of how to acquire the uber uniques. This was for season 4, but nothing has really changed here. But the mythic uniques and the uber uniques are the exact same thing. But in this video, I show off all of the boss locations, I show off exactly where to go, what you need. Check out that video, I'll link it down below, but I'll also make an updated version, but genuinely it doesn't need an updated version, <laughs> but for whatever reason, reason I I'll, I will do it because uh, you know for the sake of being a good YouTube content creator I could just change it to season 5 there are a couple uniques that have like uh, you know gotten updated so I can mention those in the video but basically just use this the resources are already there another thing I want to mention is if you are trying to get mythic uniques I see it all the time where people are like dude I can't build his build stop being bad you can build it just getting the mythic and uber uniques it's actually super easy in this season just like in the previous season you could just get a bunch of characters complete the uh mother's blessing thing and then uh what is whatever the thing is that you'll get when you complete the uh when you just kill monsters from the season once you complete that bounty board you're gonna get a spark you can do this multiple times and you can acquire all the uniques uh all the uh mythic uniques but you definitely want to join some sort of a discord group one that i could recommend that is completely free all you do is you go to Google, type in Diablo 4 Sanctuary Discord Official. It's got like half a million people. There is always people consistently posting their battle tags saying, hey, I'm looking for more to do, you know, bosses. Look, join join a Discord group because when you're going in to do these Uber bosses by yourself, you're essentially getting one fourth of what you could be getting. And what I mean by that is you can share the materials with three other players, meaning you get four times the amount of runs versus one time. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So that way you guys can all share and you can make friends and you guys can consistently do it. And one thing that I've always suggested, and this is something that I do on my stream all the time. If I'm doing the bosses, I'm always like, hey, would anyone like to join? We have a spot. Ideally, if per people have the materials, that's cool, but I never really require it. But when you make friends, sometimes you can still invite other people and then they will invite you. Let's say that like, you know, you play with this person, you guys opened up a lot of durials, they're good players. You can invite them again if you, you know, want to make friends. That is a good way to progress in Diablo. Maybe you need a power level because I hear all the time, man, it takes too long to level. I don't want to reset. I just want to play in Eternal for the rest of my life. Hey, do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, making friends in this game is very easy. There's no real PVP with this game. So you can't really like mess up. Like it's very difficult unless then, you know, someone scams you somehow. But for the most part, the Diablo community is very good in the Sanctuary Diablo 4 Discord. If some people are too slow, it's fine. Just Finish whatever you're doing, and then you can unfriend them. But, you know, realistically, I like to usually play with people that are fast, and some people play at a different pace, and that's fine. Maybe someone is playing way too fast, and they're just like, specifically with like Lightning Sorceress this season, people are just going so fast to the point where like, you're unable to keep up, they're one-shotting everything, and you're like, well, I don't even want to play, I'm not even doing anything. And that could be another thing. So if you find a group of people that you can play with, that's ideal. Definitely try to find a Discord group. There's tons, but the one that I can recommend is the official Sanctuary Discord. Just again, Google it and you'll find access to it. Um, but there's this, this one also. Oh, like, gosh, when I mi uh, minimized it, it, like moved to the comments over here. So I want to go over this one um, where this person over here says, why would you cover the part of your screen that shows the tier? It seems sus. Like I said, I, I wouldn't Photoshop any gameplay, but like in the exact gameplay, Right here, it shows what we completed, which is tier seven. You can also find out the monster's level and that will also show off what tier the content is, whether it be the pit or whatever, that actually tells you. But what I find so strange is like, if you just watch the video, it, it's usually explained and it usually will show everything that you need. Like some people will be like, I didn't get to see like this or how, how come you use the skill when it is like literally in the video? It, it's crazy, but this is something just like as a content creator, I know across any video game that happens, but like, I promise you guys, if you watch the video, nine times out of 10, it'll explain like whatever niche thing that, that if it is a really weird thing, like this barbarian build that's quite weird, it explains why we run certain things that are like abnormal because this is kind of a unique build in the game. 
Another thing that I wanted to go over, and this is like a huge thing specifically for just content creation and when you are looking for a YouTube video. If one YouTuber says, I'm uploading like a Necromancer build that hits for this amount of numbers versus another content creator uploading another number, big number does not always mean more DPS. So this is very like relevant with Necromancer because sometimes people say, oh, Necromancer must be the best build. It hits for, you know, 10 billion damage. While the Sork, it's only hitting for several million. Obviously the Necromancer is better. Why would I, why is, why are you putting Sork above Necromancer on a tier list? Uh, so what it comes down to is like, this is like the easy math. So if I hit one time for 1 billion every 10 seconds, cause it has to charge up or whatever, right? Versus I can hit for a half a billion, 10 times a second. Well, that's just simply more damage. So don't be baited by, you know, numbers, but you know, as a content creator, I get it. Like even in one of my most recent videos, I'm like, oh, I could do a billion damage per tick on the poison, which is actually very relevant because that's something that, you know, you can actually do. I get it as content creators, you know, you want to put the, the big damage, but I just don't want you guys as viewers to ever get baited by certain combos in the game that can be very good, but the amount of DPS that they are dealing is unrealistic because if you, you see the big number, it doesn't always mean that it's a better build. So just take you know all those things with a grain of salt. Another thing I wanted to mention with a bunch of different like builds is there's I usually put a bunch of notes, but I do things a little bit different with my builds, and this goes across all like different websites for this. So uh, on uh, mobile lytics, I'll usually put some notes of like you know you can run this and you know things things that don't work or whatever because they're bugged. You know Diablo's a game that sometimes they need to uh, fix some certain bugs. But I also sometimes include like a different version of the build, which is something that you guys can click on and it's gonna bring you to the other build page. Now, a lot of websites uh, will have some sort of like switch and I used to include it, but then I would constantly hear people say, you forgot to put the other version of the build. So what I've done is just, I made two different and completely different profiles for the build. Uh, but what there is, and this is uh, another uh, content creator that actually did it. Uh, so shout out to Nick over here. He's another uh, awesome um, Sork player. But if you see that there are these other setups uh, and I always put it in the notes, like if you want to run another build, but like people just simply don't click on it. It's something I even noticed on max roll. Like people are, are saying, they, they, they click on the build and they're like, well, you were running a completely different thing. There are different build variants sometimes. You can see that like in the end game, that there's Ubers, there's different variants on a lot of websites. So use those tools because maybe you're, you're just starting out. Maybe you're running the starter one. Usually I don't upload starter ones because I just, upload like a starter like build uh, in terms of it just being level 50 because when you upload it over here, people sometimes are like, well, I don't have this item so it doesn't work or whatever the case may be. It's just as a content creator, you get a lot of like, you know, questions that you'll have to ask again and again. Sometimes I just keep them in the notes because it makes things easier in terms of what you can swap. And another thing I wanted to mention is sometimes builds get updated and like this one over here, someone asked, how, how do I get called the ancient? I didn't slot it into the skill. There are certain skills that you can get, like I mentioned, like Harlequin, but sometimes things get updated. And this was a thing specifically with tempering where like sometimes a certain temper gets removed out of the game. And what happens with a lot of build websites is they're not going to update instantly. And that thing that you had slotted in, if it gets deleted, it pushes something up one and so this happened with the tempering i know and what happened was like i think i was playing like a range that like, might have been like a rapid fire build right and then there was another thing that came out that was in the same category and it pushed everything like up and then i was getting some sort of melee one as a temper and obviously that's like a mistake uh, that it looks like a mistake but what happened was like the website updated and it just moved certain things over because this game is a game that evolves certain things get moved around Sometimes uh, tempering like uh, on like flurry size got changed. Sometimes they remove things, even trick attacks got removed. So in certain builds, make sure that you're checking out the most up-to-date one. But also uh, what I could also recommend uh, as, as far as like a good video to not how to be you know, how to not be bad at the game is if you are trying to acquire the best gear all the time, I get asked all the time, how do you get the best in slot? How come your gear is way better? Are you buying items? Like I said before, I would never cheat in the game. I would never buy things because again, as a Diablo partner, you'd probably lose your partnership if you want to continue it. Yeah, you probably don't want to do anything that avoids or avoids the terms of service of the game. But you can trade items in the game for gold, not real money, but there's a really good video that I just uploaded a few days ago. I highly recommend you guys to check that out. If you want to get the best gear, use 
some sort of trade website. There's tons of them. Diablo.trade is pretty much the most popular. There's Crimson Market. There's probably a, a ton of other ones. There's Discord groups. But if you want to get the best of the best gear, again, it's going to really come down to trading. Don't try to go ahead and try to acquire the gear yourself by playing 30 hours a day unless you want to play solo self found. But I know this video was kind of long, but I really felt like it really needed to be out there because I get all the time in comments about certain things and I would rather them have this video to not only become more powerful and understand maybe the question that they asked, again, and some of it was like, you don't have a skill slot in your skill, how do you have it? And also like the build variations and like attack power being like a stat. This video was kind of for that. And then on top of that, you get all this extra information. So hopefully this video guide was in informational and you learned something new. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you're new here, hit subscribe, turn the bell. And if there's anything that I missed out on that you guys felt like was really good for players to, you know, be able to understand and how to not be bad at the game, let me know and we can maybe make a follow-up to this in the future. But check the pen. There's going to be a bunch of other videos. There's going to be great resources that will save you a ton amount of time. Anyways, take care. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.